there's an authentic uh, creative mode and then there's something that gets corrupted by the kind of mechanisms of the music industry and corporate pressure and record companies and then the, that becomes something that is tainted in some way from its original authentic thing. Some, pe some people, not so much me, but I've worked out, some people are like, they like liking someone because it's different. So as soon as they're not different, they don't like liking them. I suppose the DJ is like, do you want to play a song that you know the crowds will love? Or do you want to be different and play songs that you like mm. that maybe not everyone's heard? If you want to be a commercial artist and you want to go down the major label route, you, then you can kind of you can kind of be moulded by them to make music that you maybe aren't completely into, but you can make make money if you want to be a serious artist. You've just got to make the music you like. You know, being commercially successful used to be about making money from selling your records and now most bands and artists don't make anything from selling their music anymore. They become commercially successful if some advertising company picks up a tune and puts it on an advert. And that's what mainstream commercial people do to songs, they just rinse them and rinse them. Radios, they'll play songs three, four times a day, it's unnecessary, it's unneeded. Well, you know, the thing is, there's a kind of contradiction in that, what makes a genre underground, because in a way, in my experience, the true underground scene is before it becomes a genre. The, the point where it becomes a genre is when the music press or enough people have decided this kind of mu there's enough of these kind of people doing the same kind of music to call it something. In a, way, in a way, by the time it's called something, it's already dead as a genre, because it's already been given this kind of frame of, you know, you're an indie band or you're, you know, you're drum and bass or you're dubstep or you're electro swing or by, by the time somebody's throwing a name at it, people have an expectation of it. The fact that, I don't know, music's kind of where it's like individual and oh, different, but sometimes, I don't know, other, other artists come along and make it so it's not individual and different, where people kind of started it, started it off that way. I'd say Nero was like that. Like I used to like his stuff when he was like proper drum and bass and quite, not unusual, like his drum and bass songs, were, they were like quite drum and bassy, but they were kind of unusual in a way. And now he's, I still like his album now, but I don't like it for the same reasons as, I like it because it's like basically a pop album, but I still like pop music, so I still like it. It's just completely different to his stuff beforehand. Well, and what I, I, I what I, I, I don't know, no, no. It's not so much it's disappointing, it's just the reason why they change. And it's obviously to get money and stuff, but I can't get my head around why why people like this and not this. It's a case of having a hook in your music, I think. Yeah. And there's certain people that can have a hook in their music without really being a pop record and like Norman has never really made what is classed as a pop record he's just he's just got an ear for a great hook that people like without it being Jesse J or without it being possibly the Rizzle Kicks that are just that side of pop where Norman's this side where Mark Knight just makes out and out kind of dance music it might have a hook in it but it's not a, a kind of accessible hook so there's that kind of difference with the hooks in the record that makes a underground record and makes a kind of commercial record and it's just been on the right side of that and we just put our records we think are good and kind of with Lazy the Express 2 David Byrne record we never intended that to be a hit record we just thought it'd be a great collaboration and they delivered it and we were just kind of like wow and it just turned it into a hit because David Byrne just gave it that great hook that everyone can sing along to. Bands gen generally start off with a bit more streetness about them or a bit more urgency or a bit more anger or a bit of kind of something that they want to do or something they want to say and then usually for most bands they kind of exhaust that around the end of the first album maybe the second album and then if they're kind of successful in any way then there's usually somebody saying to them we'll have more of that kind of thing and then they kind of end up doing more of that because somebody offers them some money. 
and in that way, I guess that was I guess that is less authentic. But then, if you're a pop artist, take Kylie for example. So, if you're a pop artist like Kylie, who's not writing your own things in the first place and whose only aim is to be commercially successful, then that's authentic pop, but probably not in the way that you're thinking about it in terms of this project. And probably somebody who's right from the start has only ever wanted to be a commercial pop success. Arguably, you could say that's just as authentic and less corrupted as time goes on, if that's all they ever wanted in the first place. I'm saying like authenticity is bad, not bad, um, like authenticity, like something's not authentic when more people like it. Um, I don't really agree necessarily because just because more people like something and it becomes like more well known, maybe a bit less authentic, I don't think it's a bad thing. If you take dubstep for an example, I mean dubstep came out of kind of various different origins of two-step and a bit of garage and a bit of drum and bass, a bit of dub reggae. There weren't loads of people doing it five years ago, and then, I don't know, something happens, doesn't it? It's one of the kind of great mysteries of life, really. Something happens where something floats to the surface, and then there's a scene where people are going, you, you, you know, you've got to go up to Manchester to go to this club because there's something happening there. I don't even know what it is, but it's brilliant. And then six months later, there's 50 clubs playing it. And then it's called something, and then it becomes a dubstep night, and then it's and then it's the scene, and then you know, then the pop stars of the moment think, oh, this is the edgy thing at the moment. So then you get Madonna or Britney or whatever chucking a bit of dubstep into their songs because it makes them sound a bit more street, and but it's already dead, really, as a genre by that time. But at the same time, I sort of think, well, it's only music. It's only a type of music. It's only a style. I mean, I guess one thing is to separate out style and aesthetic of music and attitude and I think that's partly what you two are getting at a little bit with your thing is it's not just that somebody starts to change the sound of their music to make it more accessible it's something about their attitude changes as well. It's like when you go say see a film that's a certain genre you go see a romantic comedy you know where it's going to go, you know yeah, what's going to happen, happen but you still want it to kind of be the same. Yeah, it's not going to suddenly turn into a horror film halfway through. Yeah, so when I go buy Nero's new album, I want it to be kind of different, but I still want it to be the same because I still want to hear Nero. I don't hear Nero in his new album compared to his old. We will advise what we think would be better, but ultimately we're an independent label and the artists have control and we all give them as much control as they want. Now, if they make the wrong decision, we kind of have to go with it because we can advise them saying, look, we think you should do this. And they're going, no, that's how it is. We can come up, okay. And they might be right. The thing is, we, 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 we don't know any better than they do. We can just, we've been in this business a while. We think you should do this. If they go with it, then great. If they don't, we'll put out the, the record they want to put out. It's their music at the end of the day. I can't go to an artist, no, your record has to sound like this. We're not universal. We, we don't mould people into pop acts. We just put out the best records we think they can kind of put out. So, um, yeah, we like to give the artist the control. There's lots of people out there that can make kind of underground music and make a living out of it. It's harder than having kind of massive hits, but um, there's people kind of look at Express 2, they've had one hit in their whole career and they've been going 25 years. And they make, that. They, this is what they've done for 25 years, they've made music and they've DJed and that's what they want to do for the rest of their lives. So um, you can do it, it's just, it, it's hard work and you've just got to keep at it. The audience ha has changed because it, it's gone more mainstream, so people that didn't know what dubstep was a year ago are now buying, as soon as you see Universal, put out a compilation called This Is Dubstep or This Is Whatever Genre Is Called at the moment, you know it's broken. And the, the proper kind of kids that kind of want to be part of a scene will go and find another scene to be part of.